So the last time I discussed the matchup between Justin Gaethje and Max Holloway, I was very specific with my verbiage of how I thought this fight was going to go. And the verbiage I used was, Max Holloway is going to get his shish kebobbed. And I tried to be very literal with that statement. And the reason I was of this opinion, the last time Max Holloway moved up to 155, he was extremely undersized. There were moments in his fight with Dustin Poirier where Max was cracking him. Like He was landing clean combinations, and it just was not having an effect on Poirier. I mean, he was just tanking them. And every single time he landed, Max got rocked. Every single time. But I was and still am of the mind that Max Holloway can 100% become an elite 155er. But the key to doing that is to abandon the 145 pound division. Say he's done with it, he's never going back, and fully acclimate to fighting at 155 pounds. Because the fact is, when you move up in weight class, you're putting yourself at a huge disadvantage. And when you look at guys who have moved up weight classes and had success, guys like Dustin Poirier, Robert Whitaker, Charles Oliveira, the thing about all of them was they didn't immediately jump up and start fighting elite competition. They started off fighting lower ranked guys and worked their way up and over the years they fully grew into the new weight class. I mean, you look at Robert Whitaker's first fight at 185 and he looked really small in there. He was clearly way more skilled than his opponent, but he was having a really hard time putting him away just because of the massive size difference. Imagine if he immediately jumped up to fighting one of the best guys in that weight class. He would have got killed. That's why I like what Davidson Figueredo is doing. Starting off with Rob Font and now Cody Garbrandt instead of going, you know, right for the very top of the division. But Max Holloway is not taking this approach. And of course, as we saw when he moved up and fought Dustin Poirier, it's a tough ask. But I get it, Holloway's the second, well, I guess now third best featherweight in the world, and he's been so dominant in the weight class. And since as far as I know, he still wants to fight at 145. So he's not ready to make a permanent move and build his way up. He wants to jump right to the top. So overall, I really did not like this fight with Justin Gagey, but as we've seen, Max Holloway is aware of the mistakes he made against Poirier. He said at the time he was just a big 45er fighting at 55, and that this time he's going to really put on weight, he's going to really put on size, and he's going to make sure this time that he's a real lightweight. And I like the sound of all that. But I'll be honest, I'm still a little weary just because there's a big difference from taking a couple months to kind of pump yourself up versus really getting used to carrying that extra weight. Anybody who's put on weight for a combat sports competition will tell you, you can definitely put on a decent amount of size within a few months, but you're going to be a bit clunkier, you don't feel quite as fluid, and you fatigue quicker. That's why it's usually a better idea to be cutting during your training camp, to shed as much body fat as you can, and retain the most amount of muscle you can. But when you're bulking through your training camp, at the end of the day, you are putting on body fat. It, it, there's no way around that. If you are putting on muscle, you're also putting on fat. So it's not as ideal as I would like for Max Holloway to fully acclimate to 155, but one thing is for sure. He's going to be a lot better adjusted to that weight class now than he was the last time he went there. That is undeniable. So here's what I want to do. Let's give Max the benefit of the doubt and say he has made all the correct adjustments to be the best he can possibly be at 155 and just judge Max Holloway and Justin Gaethje skill for skill and see how they match up. And when you do that, I think this fight gets pretty close. And now, first things first, if you look at old Justin Gaethje, Gaethje when he first got to the UFC, where he would just never stop moving forward, shell up, absorb damage, and just stay in the pocket and drop bombs on you, then you'd have to go with Max Holloway. Like, you just have to. And that's because the thing that makes Max Holloway so good is his ability to move into the pocket with combinations, and then sliding just out of range to avoid your counters, and then moving back in again. And Holloway is hittable, and that's because he wants to land long combinations in the pocket with you, but because his chin is so strong, he's able to tank the counters, and then land another five, six bunches on you. And it causes guys to get overwhelmed, to shell up, and then he just pours on the pressure more and more. 
So if you're taking a full-sized Max Holloway against old Justin Gaethje, who's just marching him down, chin-tucked, winging combinations, Holloway's going to eat the occasional shot, but most of the time be just out of range, and he's going to never stop countering. But we're not talking about old Justin Gaethje, because Gaethje has gone through what I can only describe as a complete metamorphosis. New Justin Gaethje is way more safe, he takes less risks, he's a lot more defensively sound, yet he is still just as dangerous. Justin now, he hangs on the outside, does a lot of feinting, and a lot of times he's just waiting for you to enter into range so he can counter you with a bomb. And also, his entries to get into the pocket to land punches, super safe and very effective. I don't think Justin gets enough credit for how technical he is. Because when he's in the pocket, his head movement and his counters are, are so good. J just look at this sequence with Michael Chandler. How Justin slips just out of range and counters. And of course, you cannot forget about the leg kicks. By this point, every time someone is fighting Justin Gaethje, I, I guarantee you a huge portion of their camp is working on dealing with the leg kicks. And because of that, guys are typically ready when Gaethje throws them on the outside. But what's so hard to deal with is him slipping your punch in the pocket and then throwing a leg kick about six inches away from you. That is what guys really struggle dealing with. And overall, it's just the amount of damage he can cause with his attacks. He busts guys up bad. And on top of all of this, on top of everything I've already listed, he can eat bombs. But, but... Here is a very important caveat to all of this. Justin welts whenever he is fighting for a world title. Habib was just marching into the pocket with Justin. Wasn't even setting it up with much. He was literally just running at him. Now, Justin Gaethje has always been known as a guy who thrives in the fire. He is super calm and technical. Forehead to forehead with you. Able to land bombs. But the one thing that was clear in that fight was Gaethje was freaking the fuck out. He was scrambling whenever Habib entered into range, throwing these crazy wild hooks and missing badly. But I mean, of course, this is no secret. Gaethje will tell you this himself. Every time the morning I woke up, my heart rate was around between 33 and like 36. And the morning I woke up in Abu Dhabi, it was at 68. And when I saw that, I knew something wasn't right. But it was the same thing with Charles Oliveira. I mean, Oliveira was in his face, marching him down. And again, Gaethje was freaking out, like throwing these huge wild hooks way out of range and falling over. You know, part of it may be that Gaethje, you know, he is a good wrestler. He's not easy to take down at all. But when you get him down, he's a baby. He does not know any jujitsu at all. And of course, Charles Oliveira and Habib Nurmagomedov, insanely dangerous on the ground. So that may have played a factor, but one thing you cannot deny, there is a clear difference between those two performances and when he fought Fazeev, who is an insanely fast and dangerous striker. I mean, way more dangerous than Habib was on the feet. And you see how calm Gaethje was, how he ended up breaking Fazeev down in the later rounds and start catching him. So you can speculate a lot of reasons why Gaethje's performances in those fights were very different, but one thing that is objective was when Gaethje was pressured hard, he did not like it. He could not stand it. So can Max Holloway replicate that? I think it's possible. I am very hesitant to say that's going to be the most likely scenario, but I think it's possible. But the reason I don't think it's the most likely is because Max does have some physical disadvantages here, even if he is at a good weight. And the big one is, a huge thing that helps Max overwhelm guys is his height and his length at 145. Now, of course, it's not required. When you look at the Calvin Cater fight, Cater is the exact same height as Max, but with a longer reach. But Holloway, for one, was way faster. Two, just way more technical of a striker. And three, there were times, especially early on, that Cater was able to land, but he, he just could not hurt Max. So Max never stopped coming. He was getting Cater to shell up, which just allowed him to unload even more, and he got destroyed over five rounds. But you look at Gaethje's last few fights, and you see how patient he is on the outside, just waiting for you to come in so he can land counters. And then you look at the fact that Max is going to have to close the distance, 
And of course, the fact that Max most likely will not be able to finish this fight. He's going to have to win by decision. It starts getting tougher and tougher to pick Max. I mean, the thing about Holloway's style, it's a snowball effect. Once he gets into a rhythm, he never stops. He will never stop throwing. The way to counteract this is by one, to keep moving and never get trapped in the pocket shelled up. And two, is by landing big counters on him and interrupting his rhythm. This is what Volkanovski did in the third fight against Max, and this is what Dustin Poirier did when they fought. If you're unable to interrupt Max's combinations, next thing you know, he's landing 15 punches on you a second. And and now, of course, way, way easier said than done. Obviously, it, it would take a tremendous amount of skill to pull this off against Max Holloway. But, as I notioned to earlier, when you look at how technical Gaethje is in the pocket with his head movement and his counters, he's going to be able to catch Max and also get back out of range again. The only question is now, how much are the shots going to really affect Holloway? In theory, he should be okay, if you look at his track record. So, will he be able to overwhelm Gaethje in the later rounds? If you look at his fight with Dustin Poirier... Dustin did slow down a lot towards the end of the fight, but I think a big reason for that was he unloaded on Max multiple times when he'd hurt him. He would throw these crazy flurries at him trying to finish the fight, and he was unable to do so. I mean, I think if they would have a hypothetical rematch directly after that fight, the first thing Mike Brown would have told Poirier would be to relax, do not try finishing him, and just keep rocking him. If he had done that, I think his cardio would have held up way better. But then again, this was Holloway still walking around his same weight at 145. So I think it is very possible Max stays in his face, starts picking up the combinations as the fight goes on, and as we've seen from Gaethje in the past, he starts getting uncomfortable, starts throwing those winging hooks and knocking himself off balance. And Max is able to start taking over. But now we have to look at the last big variable here, and that is Gaethje's leg kicks. In the past, Max Holloway has been very susceptible to leg kicks. And that's because for a very large portion of his career, he'd fight with a very wide stance with a lot of weight on his front leg. And in Max Holloway and Volkanovski's first fight, Volk landed an insane amount of leg kicks. He was able to use that paired with his movement to really interrupt Max and never let him get into a flow. But in the immediate rematch, Max came out with a different style. One Volk and his team would name Muay Thai Max. He was standing a lot more narrow and a lot more upright. Now, he wasn't attempting to check the leg kicks, but what he was doing was attempting to pull out every time Volk threw a leg kick, and he did a much better job this fight at negating them. Volk was able to land more inside leg kicks, but all in all, it was way less effective that fight. And Max Holloway has primarily used this stance since, but it still didn't stop Yair Rodriguez from landing a lot of outside calf kicks. And I think that speaks primarily to just how fast Yair is. He's certainly a lot quicker with his kicks than someone like Gaethje will be, and that's just because, you know, he was a national taekwondo champion. That's just, that's just what you're gonna get. So I'd be willing to put money on the fact that Holloway will most likely be able to deal with Gaethje's low kicks from the outside. The issue is Gaethje's ability to throw them from in the pocket. That's the problem. As we know, as I've said many times this video, Max Holloway wants to be in Gaethje's face pressuring him. He wants to do that to every single person he fights. And against most opponents, being in the pocket means the leg kick isn't there. Except for this one. And obviously, I've never personally seen Max Holloway limp after getting kicked in the leg. He's This dude's insanely tough. I don't foresee any leg kick TKOs or anything like that. But again, the big thing Justin Gaethje needs to do to win this fight is to keep interrupting Max. And I think he has a lot of abilities to do so. Personally, I resend my statement that Holloway is going to get his shish kebobbed. I think this fight has the potential to be a lot closer than people think. In fact, I see a path to victory for Max Holloway. But with that being said, I see more paths to victory for Justin Gaethje. By no means would I say this fight is a lock, but personally, I'm willing to put Gaethje on my parlay. I don't know if I will yet, we'll see. But I'm going to go with Justin Gaethje by decision.